So this is Brianna, and I just wanted to say briefly before we get started that um, I think Aubrey and I, I don't, I'm not sure how long Aubrey and I have been talking about having this presentation for, but it's been a while. It's since before Pam had her job. I know that much. <laughs> so, and just, um, I'll mostly, I think everyone who's on has a good sense of the distribution working group, but maybe for the folks who end up watching the recording, I'll just say a quick refresher, right? That the idea of the distribution working group um, as part of the farm to school leadership team was to expand local food distribution to schools throughout Montana, because we know that that is a challenge in rural communities, um, that, we, that we have a lot of great local food production happening in Montana, but that it's not always possible to get it to all the schools in Montana. And as the distribution working group has discussed this, one of the things that came up was that um, I think the members of the group were fairly well versed in farm to school, but maybe less well versed in how other distribution systems in Montana already work. And so one of the goals of the distribution working group was to just increase the knowledge of the farm to school, this farm to school working group um, about other distribution. And so Pam Fru was a obvious first choice of a speaker um, as she is the food distribution manager for OPI school nutrition programs. So I really appreciate Pam being willing to um, share today a little bit about um, her work and how they just how OPI distributes food to schools around the state. Thanks for joining us, Pam. Let me just, I'll just introduce myself really quickly. I'm Pam Fru. Um, I just had my one year anniversary in this position. So um, I cannot believe how much I have learned in a year. Um, and it has been just wonderful. But I now I know that there is so much more to learn. So I'm glad we're doing this. And, um, you know, I just think that's how things get better and improve and how we, how we discover new and better ways of doing things. So um, my background, I am work in school nutrition, but I'm not a dietitian. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in economics from MSU. And I worked in public relations and got married and had kids and was out of the workforce for a long time. And when I went back, I went back to work in school foods. So um, I spent 12 years in the Helena Public Schools um, in the kitchen. So um, elementary school, middle school, high school. And then at the end, I was doing um, special projects like um, breakfast in the classroom and second breakfast and troubleshooting and all kinds of stuff. Um, so then when this job came open, I just thought, oh my gosh, this is the perfect job for me. And um, so I just wouldn't leave them alone until I got the job, and here I am. So I just love it. Um, but my viewpoint is really from the school end. And I tend to always see things just as the person unloading the truck. So that's just, I can't stop that. That's just my experience. Um, but now I'm learning the other piece of it, too, and I'm realizing how complicated it is to load that truck. So having said that, um, that's just a picture of, I've got of the combining wheat at, um, at the Dakota Growers um, uh, Pasta Company in North Dakota is one of our USDA foods, and that's a picture of them getting their, their wheat ready to go to their plant. So uh, we can move on to the next slide. It um, just gives the standard explanation of USDA foods in schools. Um, USDA foods are 100% American grown and uh, we are using them in our national school lunch program and our summer food service program. So they go lots of other places too. They go to other, um, other programs um, and are distributed by other agencies, but for our purposes, we're just talking about national school lunch and summer food. So the next slide shows uh, just the, the, the breakout of uh, USDA foods and where they fit into a, a school's spending plan for their, for their program. Um, it's designed to be 20 to 25% of, of the school's spending on their food items for their food service. So that leaves the other pink portion of that circle, the other 80% is coming from other places to um, meet the needs of the school food service, which is what you guys are doing. Um, so that's everything else. You know, your local, your farm to school, your school garden, your Cisco, your FSA, your co-ops, 
um, all that stuff is the other 80%. Um, and just to give you a little detail, the next slide shows both real numbers for our state and where the entitlement comes from. So when we're talking about USDA foods and spending, we use that word entitlement a lot. Um, and these are just the real numbers for Montana. So for the year that we're going to start, the 2019 and 2020 school year, that 4432000 that is what we're going to, our overall entitlement to our state from the USDA. And the way they get that number is very simple. It's the, the total lunches served times a per meal rate. So this year, the per meal rate is 33 and a half cents times 13,230,725. That was our total lunches served for the 2017-18 school year. And multiply those two together, and you get the 4,432,000. So those are the real numbers. That's where it comes from. Um, the next slide just kind of gives some explanations. The most important thing, um, there's no cash value to that four million dollars. Um, all of that is for spending on USDA foods program. Um, the USDA doesn't have an account for every school where they where they record, you know, okay, Opine gets, you know, three thousand four hundred dollars. They don't have that. They um, give it all to the state distributing agency and then the state distributing agency is responsible for distributing it and making it um, keeping track of it and making sure that it's used properly. So that um, in this case is Office of Public Instruction. Every state does it differently, but most states school foods are distributed out of the, the education department or um, in our case OPI. So, so far so good. Is that, am I too much detail? Not enough? Keep going. I, I think you're, this is great so far, Pam. Okay, keep going. Okay, so the next slide. Um, okay, that's us. We're, this, we're the state distributing agencies, and every state does it differently, but we distribute according to total lunches served. So we get that total overall $4 million, and we just look at every single school's total lunches served, and then we divvy it up, and it is kept track of in our internal. We have a system called MAPS that tracks claims for the lunch for the lunch program, and then also um, all all kinds of other things. And then food distribution is in that MAPS system also. So the next slide. Let's see here. Where is that? This is just really simple math, and I'll go through this fast. It's probably more than you wanted to know, but it is kind of important. Um, so here's a pretend school. And you can see there's the three different levels of payment. There's the, the, um, the full paid breakfast and lunch, the reduced rate breakfast and lunch, and the free. And let's just say this school served, you know, 5,000 free breakfasts and 2,000 uh, reduced and 2,500 full pay over the year. And then same thing for lunch, those numbers. Um, how would we get their entitlement number out of that? If we go to the next slide, it illustrates very simply the things that don't factor in. And that's what a lot of schools don't really, don't really always get. So it doesn't matter if it's free, reduced, or full pay. It doesn't matter how many breakfasts you serve. Your entitlement is based on your total lunches served. And again, the rate does not matter. So in a case where if you had a school that served 20,500 lunches, we would multiply that times the per meal rate, and that's where you get your dollar amount, 68.67. So um, that's what they would have to spend for the entire year. So then the next slide, <clears throat> excuse me, shows what you can do with that with that entitlement assistance dollars. Um, there's no cash value to it. So you have three things you can do. You can spend it on your regular USDA foods which are sometimes called brown box foods. These are the, the canned, the frozen, the dried items that we are shipping out from our Helena warehouse. The second choice is USDA bulk foods for further processing. And we have a co-op user group, um, about 15 schools in it. So very, very limited in our state. 
um, that does divert bulk commodities, um, pounds of cheese or pounds of chicken or pounds of beef to approved processors. And then the processor um, turns that into a finished good. And we'll get a little bit more into that. And then the third choice is your USDA DOD fresh. And that is fresh produce ordered throughout the year um, and delivered, in our case, in our state, by grass mixed produce. So, um, so those are the three things you can do with that money. Um, the next slide is just a, a visual aid that I did for the SNA conference. Um, my, my empty number 10 cans, you know, I have a real thing about throwing away cans. Um, and uh, don't get me started on recycling. But anyway, um, so I have my, my three cans here, and one is the red one is the regular USDA foods, and then the blue one is the DOD fresh, and the white one is the bulk processing. So you have your entitlement dollars, and you can divide it up however you want between those three programs. So every school makes those decisions for themselves. OPI does not get involved in that at all. We just carry out what they ask us to do. So a little bit more detail. Um, the next slide, bulk foods, um, talked about that. Those are raw pounds deliver that are delivered to a processor. Um, the school orders um, a, a particular finished good that is pre-approved by their co-op. And um, when the delivered good is, 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 or the completed finished good is delivered to the school, the, the value of that um, USDA food that it took to make the finished product is subtracted from the invoice pipe price, basically. So that's one thing that you can do. Um, the second one, the most popular one, the next slide, is the regular USDA food. So um, this is the bulk of what we do. Um, about almost four million of those dollars we talked about goes into this program. This is um, what schools are they're requesting these um, items on what we call our annual survey. So we're doing that in February. We did that in February of 2019 for the items that are now coming into our warehouse that are going to be shipped out over the course of the 1920 school year. And this is our US grown and produced. It's retail quality. Um, that's a really important point. It hasn't always been that way. Used to be, this USDA foods used to be a surplus type of a program, and it is no longer a surplus program. It is a demand-driven um, program where, the, where items are um, competitively bid and procured by the USDA and uh, the FNS, and that's what we're getting in our warehouse. So first quality stuff, um, and then it comes to our warehouse, and our warehouse, we, we turn around and ship it out. We use Watkins Shepherd as our trucking company and they, we just renewed our bid with them and they um, charge us $3.33 a case. So it doesn't matter where it's going, we pay $3.33 a case um, to get it there. In Montana, our public schools do not pay a per case delivery charge. And that's, um, that's pretty rare because the national conferences that I've gone to when I ask other states or other states ask me, how much do you charge for distribution? I say zero, they can't believe it. So we're giving our schools a really good deal with that. Um, and then the next slide shows the uh, DOD Fresh produce. This is another, another piece of that pie where if a school wants to participate, they can. Um, they decide that every year if they want to they participate or not. Um, they choose a dollar amount that they want to allocate toward the program. And again, they're doing this in February. So they're planning way, way ahead on this program. And then their ordering, though, is done um, online throughout the year, again, whenever they choose to order. And those orders are fulfilled by Grasmic Produce, who is the DOD contracted vendor. So um, the next slide down, let's see. I guess it's kind of just a reiterating there the picture of the whole pie the slice that's the USDA foods there, and then inside of that slice, what, what can be there. You could have 100% USDA foods, you could have 100% DOD fresh, 
or you could have 100% bulk for processing if you wanted to. We, in Montana, we don't regulate that. Um, and it can be anything in between. It's a total wide <laughs> scale. Um, let's see, the next slide down. I wonder if I got these a little out of order here. Um, I just put a, so here I thought, I'm, I started. I guess I started focusing more on DOD Fresh here. This is a sample page that I just screenshot from the Favors catalog. This is a weekly catalog. So schools who are participating in DOD Fresh, um, they look at this catalog comes out on Sunday night, and um, the prices are going to change every week. Again, it just depends on the, the going rate, the market conditions, all that stuff that you guys know about. Um, the price there includes delivery to get it to your location. And this is, um, this is really important in our state because it doesn't matter if you are in Shelby or if you're in West Yellowstone or wherever you are, if you're participating in this program, um, you're going to get a case of, um, what's the first thing there, um, some kind of apple, 138 to 163 counts. Um, of apples for $35.24 delivered. Um, you don't have to worry about procurement documentation. You don't have to worry about an invoice because all you have to do when that, when that order comes in, you look it over. If it looks okay, you receive it in that favor system and you're done. So it's a very simple way, especially for a food service director who is really busy doing other things like refing basketball games and you know, teaching an English class and also cooking and ordering, they are, um, it's very easy to, to order from, from favors. Um, the next slide down shows our delivery map. This is um, a map that Grasmic Produce put together. It shows everywhere that they go and then the different color pins for, for the different routes. Um, so most of those are weekly deliveries. The upper, that red route there, the Canacota Loop route, is a biweekly delivery. Um, the yellow route is a little bit under construction for this year. They're shifting a few things around there between the yellow and the green, I think, and maybe the red. Um, and then the next slide down, just kind of some, some considerations to me that I've learned. Um, this is almost, this is the exact opposite of how we order and survey for our USDA foods that come from our warehouse. So where we're ordering a year ahead for our regular USDA foods, for your, for your DOD fresh, you're ordering no more than seven days ahead. So really the two fit together very nicely because you've got long-term planning and then you've got last minute, I need something for my salad bar. Um, but the window, the timing is really tricky on that. And this is where most of our, this is where our customers can get really frustrated because um, you can't order more than seven days ahead, but you have to order at least four days out. So it's very, it's a, it's a little tough if you're, if you're only doing it, you know, a couple times a month or whatever to get that, to get that down right. Um, the favor system where they're, where they're ordering their, their items is not real time. So again, it, it has to be, um, it downloads to Grasmic Produce every night, but they don't, they don't have it right away. So sometimes, again, that timing window is hard. Someone will think they're ordering four days ahead and really it's three, or they think it's three and really it's two. And you know, so it can get kind of complicated there. But the challenge for them is that their delivery routes are different every week. So um, in our regular USDA foods, where Watkins Shepherd is the um, is the distribution, they know they are going to every single school every single month. Um, period. Their routes are set. The only thing they have to worry about is their weights. But for our DOD Fresh, it's super challenging because you know you might you might have to make sure that you, you're first of all you're dealing with the perishable products, and then you have 72 hours to figure out how to build your truck, and it's 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 tricky. It really is. They do a good job, but it's tricky. Um, Pam, Pam, I have a quick question. On that. Are the routes different just because uh, different schools order each week? Is that the, I mean, is that what's driving? Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's ex exactly it. So the, the route actually 
that's probably a better way to put it. The route stays the same, but the stops are different because, oh. you know, some schools might order every week. Some save all their money and order at the end of the year. You know, so it's very, um, it's very fluid, and it's never going to look the same from one week to the next. Right. So it also makes it very challenging for the driver, not only to build the route, but for the driver to know, you know, is this the school where I back in from the alley and then, you know, knock on the door? You know, it's very, um, very, there's a lot there. Um, let's see. And this next slide, I don't know that, I, this was kind of in here from, from the, um, the SNA conference, but it, it might fit in with what you guys are, if you're dealing much with schools. Um, that we've, we've got the USDA DOD Fresh, but we also have the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program. So it, it's very confusing, obviously, um, because what it says there, I mean, they're both involved produce and they both are served in schools. So it, it, it's understandable, people get confused, but um, the basic difference is that the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program is um, it's more of an educational concept. It's um, food that is served outside of the regular meal times, and it's just a way of exposing kids to different fruits and vegetables that they might not otherwise see on a salad bar. They might not see it at home. Um, we're not worried about portion sizes and that kind of thing like we are at our meal service times, but this is a whole separate program, um, and all the procurement is done for that by the school. Um, the other big difference with this program is that the schools that are participating here are invited by OPI, and that just has to do with funding, and I won't go into all that, but so that varies from year to year. But in that case, we're not delivering for this program. These are schools going out and making purchases of items um, that they, would like to bring into their fresh fruit and vegetable program. So um, probably a great way to use maybe some local um, some local procurement, um, but that's totally separate. Hey, um, this is Brianna again. I'm glad you mentioned the fresh fruit and vegetable program because I'd say here at Mission Mountain Food Enterprise Center, that was definitely our experience that a lot of schools were incorporating local produce purchases through the fresh fruit and vegetable program. It just seemed like they had a little more budget flexibility there um, because they were, as you said, sort of exposing the kids to extra fruits and vegetables through a snack program and they weren't having to put a whole meal out the way they are for um, the lunch program. There was just a little more flexibility and budget flexibility. So I'm really glad you distinguished that, you know, fresh fruit and vegetable program, they're kind of going out and um, identifying where they would like to source from versus DOD Fresh where they're ordering from the catalog Right, and it's all delivered through Grasmic Produce. That's a really useful, useful distinction. Good, good. Yeah, it is, and, it, and it's hard to keep it all straight. And then you might have a school that last year qualified and participated and loved it, and this year doesn't. And it has to do with just it has to, it has to do with their free and reduced rates, and also where they fall into the hierarchy of everybody else's of our state. Um, so that is a, it takes, it takes um, the, it takes us a while to figure out, you know, who's going to be participating in that program. And he, again, people are confused because last year I wasn't, this year I am. So um, that's just, yeah, it's, but it, it is a great program for people who do it. Um, and the next slide down, yeah, so it, we kind of covered that. So this was, so at my, in my presentation, I, I had my number 10 cans for my USDA program and then for my fresh fruit and vegetable program and for this I want I put it in a basket because I wanted it to be like visually this is a whole different thing you know um, and let's see Caroline Olson is our um, program specialist that is overseeing and managing the fresh fruit and vegetable program this year so that was something um, that uh, Camille who had been doing before and um, so now that she's our assistant director, um, Caroline Olson has stepped in and she's um, taken this over. So, um, oh, that's the other important point, elementary grades only. Um, not a popular point, but it is a, a point. Nobody knows why. Um, and then the next slide, um, 
Oh, yeah. Okay. So we kind of, I don't know what I did here. But so now we're back to our regular USDA foods. Um, and here's Watkins Shepherd. Um, and I included this in my presentation to schools too. I wanted them to know that when we went out to bid on this in uh, March, that only one bid was submitted. So um, I think there were five, uh, just five trucking companies that said they intended to bid and we only got one bid. So it kind of tells you that it's a hard job. <laughs> um, I'm not to tell you that. But um, the rate is going to be 333 a case, so it actually went down a little bit. Um, and there was also a buyout merger in there. Watkins Shepherd was acquired by Schneider Trucking, but um, you know the agreement is a five-year agreement with, with Schneider. Um, and I, again, I just wanted schools to understand, you know, that uh, it's a partnership um, to get this food to them. And um, we need to work with Watkins, and they need to work with us, and you guys or however, you know, like everybody just needs to realize that we are a challenging um, state. But one question I kind of had for you was that I, hearing more and more about this FSA and U.S. foods merger, and just wondering how that could change things, or if it will, or if anybody has any thoughts on that. Um, but I'm sure hearing a lot about it, so I don't know um, if anybody has any thoughts on that. Um, but the other thing, the next slide shows um, again the trucks are so pretty all lined up. I just I I just love trucking now that I know more about it. Um, the, when we did renew our bid with Watkins, they, um, they have four new refrigerated trailers that are dedicated to us. They run the, um, the setup is um, when those orders go out, they're a mix of frozen and refrigerated and dry. So they load the frozen first and then um, put in a bulkhead and then um, the refrigerated and then the dry. So. Um, I guess they've done it both ways. Um, there was a time when they would send out a delivery would have um, all frozen on it, and the next one would have all dry. Um, but they changed that. It was just too hard with, with freezer space for schools. They just could not accept um, a, a load that was exclusively frozen. Um, dry wasn't so hard to handle, but it was the frozen deliveries that just um, schools just couldn't do it. So we changed it to this mixed bag of um, frozen dry and refrigerated. We don't have a lot of refrigerated, mostly more and more frozen. So that's good and bad. I'll say in our facility, freezer space is the first thing to run out always. Usually the cooler's yeah. usually fine, but warehouse for dry is fine. It's the freeze. We have three freezers now because of that. So Pam, a question on this, how often, um, are, is Watkins Shepherds making deliveries? They, um, it takes us three weeks. If everything goes perfectly, it takes us three weeks to get to every school in the state. So um, we, uh, and there's a next, in fact, the next slide shows um, the routes that each one is a different color. And it, we have, we have a total of nine routes, well, 10. Um, we have kind of a flexible one that is uh, usually like some of our bigger schools like Billings and Missoula, we have to pull off because of weight and juggle that. But um, if you go down to the next slide, Aubrey, it shows kind of where, um, where they go. So um, I guess to answer your question, they're going, every school is getting one monthly delivery from Watkins Shepherd. So, um, you know, the, some, sometimes there's two routes that can be done in a week, like the yellow and the blue, the light blue go together. The lime green, that is a whole week out on the road. Um, and with this new equipment, it's nice. It has um, the wireless um, communication, you know, for if the, something happens to the reefer unit or whatever, the alarm will go off. And um, it's they're, it's really nice equipment, and you need that when you're out, you know, in the middle of wherever, you know, if you need service or whatever. Um, so we're excited to have that new equipment. Um, 
something else, again, this is more from schools, and you guys probably already know this, the DOT guidelines um, are just stricter and stricter on, on drivers. Um, communication um, evidently is changing too. I'm told that they're becoming more and more strict with even with um, hands-free communication to schools. It's a big deal for us because um, number one, cell service isn't always great everywhere and uh, the drivers do need to give the schools some kind of notification you know, when they're, when they're coming in so the school can be ready, but they can't be communicating when they're driving. So it's, um, we lose a lot of time on just on making contact with the school. You know, you're in a kitchen, you don't hear your phone ring, you can't answer the phone, it's your service time, whatever is going on. Um, it's, uh, it's always, it's just hard to communicate. So that's something we're working on. Another big challenge we have is our four-day school. Um, there are, I'm trying to get our list cleaned up, and I'd be happy to share that if anybody wants it. But, you know, we've got somewhere between 25, like right around 25 schools that are four-day weeks. <coughs> so Friday's a business day, you know. I mean, so that's just something that they have to, um, they've got to work around. But it's a challenge. And then holidays and, and um, basketball tournaments are evidently a huge deal. <laughs> so, um, so all that factors in, too. Um, and then the next slide down, just kind of some thoughts and considerations on the regular, um, these regular routes. So number one, the, for these items that we're delivering by Watkin Shepherd out of our warehouse, that's, that's one survey, one order that the schools are doing in February. They're planning for a whole year. And they're gonna get one delivery a month for a total of nine. So we go August, September, October, April is the last delivery from our warehouse. Um, every, usually the average is about a thousand cases per truck, pretty much. Um, and it's the nice thing that Watkins Shepherd has going for them is they know where they're going. They're going to stop at all 268 stops every time they go out. So they have their bills of lading way ahead because we know what we're shipping out and they can organize it and get it ready to go. Um, so that's an advantage that they have, um, but on the downside, they have to go every single stop. So compare that to, again to Grasmic Produce, who's doing the complete opposite of this. Um, Is that how many cases a full truck? Um, basically, weight it averages out that way weight-wise, um, because again, they're they're probably in the, in each delivery. There, I try to keep it to 11 items, no more than 11. Um, that's another thing that might interest you guys. So when, when, when these trucks are loaded, they are, there's not an order picked for us. It's not like the orders are picked and loaded. It's the 11 items, you know, the frozen's going in first, and then, you know, the refrigerated, the dry. And then when the, when the driver gets to the school, they pull the order. So we try to keep it, you know, 11 items, 12 is really the max just because it is so dang hard to be accurate, you know, when you start getting much over 12 cases. Um, so that's, um, that's another challenge that they have. But, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, so that is the nutshell version. And then that's really my last slide. Then I just put my contact information in there. Um, so you guys have that. And um, I, Anything, you know, I'm just, um, again, I just feel like I learn, I, I just learn so much every single day that, um, that I just, you know, it's just amazing to me. But, yeah. but is there anything in there question-wise that um, you needed more on or? Yeah. Hi, Pam. This is Aubrey. And I just want to thank you so much for taking the time and sharing this. This is really helpful. Um, and I think the way you've explained it with the cans and the basket is great um, because they, it is confusing. And um, I, I really, I really appreciate your time. Um, one question that I have, and of course we've kind of chatted about this is um, with Grasmic Produce, can you speak to the opportunities there for having 
more local or regional foods offered through the DOD Fresh um, can. <laughs> Yay! You got it. Yeah. Um, boy, every time I talk to them, I bring it up. Now it's getting to. I mean, they know. Like they know they have to do it. Um, I can give you. I can give you the most recent example that I know. Um, Yes, we it has to get done um, this year, and 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 they have our our harvest of the month um, plan to try to coordinate with. Apples are probably the number one choice that he's looking for. Um, and last year we tried it; we just we could not match up our um, the catalog pack sizes with what was available in the state on such short notice. We just couldn't do it. But I think that this year I know that um, that is a goal. And also, um, they have now, Grasmic has secured a storage facility in Bozeman. So it gives them a little bit more um, flexibility to, to, to commit to something and hold it, not have to just pick it up on the fly. Um, I know that they were struggling with, um, he asked me about uh, a product that he had. It was an Idaho grape, so not really local. Um, to Montana, although DOD Fresh does define local as the state you're in or an adjacent state. Um, so technically it would be, but you know, the, the price, um, and I, I kind of threw this out at, at our SNA convention, um, people, I guess the good news is schools are still careful with these dollars, um, even though they're not, you know, quote, real money. Um, schools are very careful with it, and when they see a three dollar a pound grape, and they know that um, they can probably get it for a, you know ninety nine cents a pound, um, they're reluctant to to spend those dollars. Um, so uh, I think you know that's just something that um, everybody's going to have to give a little bit on, you know. Um, Schools are gonna. If, if, it, if it's important to you, then you might have to pay a little bit more. Um, so that's. I'm, I'm hopeful. I, I really feel like we're gonna see it this year, um, and and hopefully it'll be successful, and then it'll be expanded. And I think that's the main thing. You know, is that just when we know, when I know that we're gonna have a product in the catalog, I need to get out and let people know it's coming. You know, so if you're a DOD Fresh user and you haven't been um, into the catalog for a month, go look because there's Montana Beets in there, or you know, we've got Winter Squash coming. Um, start thinking about, you know, how you're going to use it or what you're going to do for your menu with your harvest of the month and how you can tie it in. So a lot of it's going to be me promoting it and us us promoting it too. I think. Uh, this is Brianna, just real quick. I'm Aubrey, I'm so glad you asked that question because I, I have a different question about DOD Fresh, but um, I'm really intrigued by Pam, what you were just saying. So I'm going to follow up on Aubrey's question. Is I mean, my understanding of DOD Fresh was that you, you know, a, a vendor in order to have something listed in that catalog had to go through the Department of Defense contractor process, you know, and become a vendor. Um, but what I'm hearing you say, it sounds like Grasmic has some flexibility on on sourcing and and could work to get more regional, shall we say, products included in the catalog. Yes. Yep. They do. Okay. They are, I thought it was more top down than that. Not that's no, not I don't think so. I think that they are doing their um, their. I don't think that they have to get anything approved necessarily by. Um, the defense, I guess it's the defense logistics agency that over, you know, that they partner with. There are some standards. There are, I know that um, that the DLA piece that they are, um, they, they, they try to be standardized as a, from state to state. So I think that, I think that's where like the, the, the case sizes of the apples came in to be an issue. Because again, last year, last fall when we tried this, I think it was a Macintosh apple, and the the pack size was like 120s or something, and and 
there was nothing in the catalog for a 120 apple. And so that's why Grasma couldn't get it done because they would have had to have a whole new line item added to, the, to their catalog. And I think that's just trying to keep it even from state to state so that you don't have a state. And this is something I always have to think about too. You know, when they're making these rules, they're making it for the, for the whole country. You know, they're not just making it for us, they're making it for everybody. So they're, they wanna make sure that, if, that, the, that everybody's getting their money's worth, basically. You know, that if you're ordering a case of apples, you're getting, um, you know, you're getting a certain size. You're, it's meeting a certain spec. But, but to answer your question, they can, I, I, they can shop. They can definitely shop and, and um, decide, you know, what, what they, what's going to work for their route. That's great. And when they're, when, when they're shopping, they're, they're the vendor for Idaho and Montana. So it, this could work two ways. You know, it could be sourcing Montana items, too, to go to Idaho. Right, right. So, and then my uh, the other question I wanted to ask on that, Pam, when you and I had talked about this a little bit, I think last year at the Farm to School Summit, is Grasmic, are they using any last mile distributors? I'm just, I'm sort of curious about cross stocking opportunities and whether they're making all the deliveries themselves or if they're working with other distributors. Um, they are, they are working with other distributors. And if you go back up, to, I guess slide number 16 shows um, shows their map and the little the things that are the trucks. So we've got the push pins, the colored push pins. Those are that truck is going to say Grasmic Produce on it, but the um, the blue trucks are um, I guess what you just call the last mile distributor. So yeah, so those are like I I um, I believe that um, Western Montana Growers is in that mix. Um, and the eastern part of the state, I can't remember who does that. But yeah, those blue trucks are uh, like a courier um, last mile distributor. Okay, that's great to know. So does anyone else have any questions for Pam? Pam, this is excellent. Thank you so much for this information. Good, I am so glad. I hope it, yeah, I hope it clarified things. And um, and again, there's so much to it. You can see how schools sometimes just throw up their hands and go, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I have one more thought, but I wanted to pause for a second and just see if other folks had questions or comments. This is Aubrey. I have another question. <laughs> Good. Um, kind of a clear, I'll find the slide. This is the favors slide. And so you had talked about, Pam, um, if when there's local or regional items on the catalog, um, being able to promote that. And I think that's something that um, you know, I'm happy to help with, and I think other people on this um, call would also be able to help promote those items if, if you can let us know when. But I just wanted to clarify that this is what it looks like for schools who are ordering, so they'd be able to see that state of origin. So if they're looking at the catalog, they'd be able to see like, oh, it's Montana or Idaho or whatever, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's right. Yep. Yep. And this is just one page. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the standard. Um, this is the standard setup. So um, this is the. That's what they see. And so, how often is um, this catalog um, updated? Weekly, every Sunday night. Oh, it says right here, posted weekly. Yeah. So it it changes yep. frequently, so it wouldn't be like you know, that maybe a line item that's a Montana would maybe only be there for a couple weeks. No, and I do know that, that um, as I've hounded Chris about this, um, one of the things that he, it, that he says is that it, it um, he's looking for more durable things like, you know, and like the apples and the beets and the squash, because then it can, he likes it to stay in the catalog for at least four weeks. Um, you know, and evidently, I'm not sure if that's just because of it's tedious to put it in and out of the catalog. I'm not really sure why that is, but he said, I, I, I don't want something where I've got to have it in one week and out the next. It makes it too hard. So, um, so 
so I know that that is a consideration that they that they look at is just how durable you know how long they can have it in the catalog how reliable it is that makes a lot of sense thanks yeah yeah, yeah what about for you guys anything I can do for you or um, that that you'd like to see or ideas so this is Brianna, and I'll just put out there, I mean, I've been so intrigued by this for so long, and seeing the two maps you shared, Pam, today just confirms what I've been thinking about, uh, which is just that there are trucks, <laughs> as we know, there are trucks going to yeah. nearly every school already, um, and how does farm to school fit into that piece? And, you know, and obviously there's, you know, quite a few rules and regulations about how these programs operate. You know, I think one exciting possibility is that um, there are local items, maybe more and more local items right in DOD fresh. I think that's a really exciting opportunity, but I've just, I have just been long intrigued by the fact that, you know, there are already trucks going to so many of these schools and, and where is there an opportunity um, to have more Montana foods on those trucks. <laughs> well, you know, maybe, just sort of thinking out loud, totally thinking out loud, not proposing anything, but maybe, um, maybe it's almost like a public relations angle with Watkins and Shepherd, um, just to say, hey, we're, we have harvest in a month. Um, we, could we pick... A, would you be willing, you know, to pick a, a route or maybe it's how we have to figure out some fair way, but um, could this stuff go out on your order, you know, on your delivery to, you know, Dodson and Malta and Whitewater? Can we, could we go to that corner with our, with our beets from Manhattan and, you know, whatever it is um, and, May, and make it a like a service agreement, you know, not um, not necessarily a pure business arrangement, but maybe there's some combination of those things that would work. Um, I know in when I talked to the um, food distribution manager for um, in North Carolina, they um, they are really heavily tied into the agriculture department, and they have their um, Delivery trucks are have those skins, you know, those um, those decoration things on the side that promoting um, North Carolina agricultural goods. Um, so that truck's going down the highway, you know, and it says, um, of course, they have they have a lot of USDA suppliers there too. So that could be kind of why that works. But, but I don't know. Maybe there's just some other ways that it could be looked at um, that that we haven't thought of. Yeah, no, I like that. Um, also, our, um, our delivery in April is light. That's usually a pretty light delivery. And, um, you know, nobody likes an empty truck either. So, um, you know, so that might be just something to keep in mind. Right. That's kind of what I always wondered about. It's like, well, if there was some room on the truck, right, it's always better to run a full truck. So if there's some room on the truck, what you know is there is there a way is it too bureaucratic or is there a way to get additional items on there or you know i'm also i'm really intrigued by the relationship between grasmic and western montana growers cooperative right you know if grasmic is dropping things off to the growers cooperative to deliver uh you know in around the missoula looks like probably the bitterroot valley on their routes you know could they be picking things up as well um and then you know the like the growers club cannot access northeastern montana um, but, you know, if Grasmic is heading out that way, what's the, you know, what's the process um, that they might be able to deliver? I don't know. It, even outside of DOD Fresh, right? Like maybe they want some flathead cherries. Right. <laughs> Which right. probably would be a line item in DOD Fresh. Mm -hmm. um, but is there a way, you know, that those flathead cherries could go from, you know, the growers co-op to Grasmic and, you know, and out to Danielle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean. I guess you don't know until you start digging into it. So I'm glad we, I'm glad we did. And I know you guys have a, um, more things to talk about. So I feel like I should let you get to that. And, um, 
and we have legislative auditors here this week, so I have I just got an email about something that's needed. So I guess I'll I'll sign off. But um, but I'm really glad we did it. Thank you so much for asking me. And um, you know, if you think of something, just shoot me an email or give me a call. And um, and then Aubrey, I'll see you at uh, Cook Fresh. I'll be there with kind of a something along this line. I'll bring my cans in my basket. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Thank good. You, Pam. Yeah, you bet. That was great. So if I so do I um do I just X out of this and then yep. hang up? Yep. Okay. All right. Thank Thanks you. Again, you guys have a great have a great rest of your day. We'll see ya. Bye. Oops. Leave me. Okay. Great. So this is Brianna again, and um, I think the second agenda item that we had put on for today was just to talk a little bit about next steps for the distribution working group and um, kind of where the distribution working group is heading. And I just, I want to preface this by saying, um, Aubrey and I kind of talked about this, well, I sent to Aubrey an email about this. We, we just have a lot of shifts happening at Lake County Community Development. Um, I'm in a really different role than when I first started participating in farm to school leadership. And Kate, who some of you I think have gotten to meet at some leadership team meetings is leaving us. Her last day is Friday. Um, and we're not, we won't be filling that position at least not right away. Um, and Rosie, who is doing most of our farm to school work is I think feeling relatively maxed with her role in um, early care and education and uh, our product development and some of the projects we have going on with that. And so, um, you know, this, the call today was, I think, uh, you know, more than a year ago, the, the folks who were active in distribution working group identified that our own knowledge of distribution systems was kind of weak and that if we were really going to strengthen distribution of local foods, we should probably get a better handle on how food distribution works in the state. And so, you know, the idea was to do presentations like the one Pam did today um, that would help provide knowledge and understanding that might um, support the projects we were already engaged in and might prompt some ideas about strategies um, for, you know, increasing distribution, especially in the most rural parts of the state. Um, and we obviously, it's taken us a while to get to this point. <laughs> so, um, I guess as we talk about maybe what the distribution working group wants to do going forward, um, I feel like I need to ask, you know, if there's someone who's willing to chair who might be able to bring stronger leadership than, uh, than I've been able to bring, than Lake County Community Development's been able to bring recently, who'd be willing to kind of step into that role. Um, yeah, and I guess, and I don't know, Kay, if you want to say anything. Oh, did we lose? Maybe Kay already hopped off. Um, Nope, I'm here. Oh, you are there. Oh, good. You just disappeared off my list. Um, you know, we had we had tried since the farm to school grant that um, NCAT currently has kind of grew out of some thinking from the distribution working group. You know, we had tried kind of combining the distribution working group and the state level advisory team calls for that project. Um, and that we realized was not a successful strategy. Um, so yeah, I kind of wanted to just get the pulse, and obviously there's not too many of us on today, but just get the pulse for where people are at, um, kind of how much of a priority is distribution working group in your work? How much value do you think it could bring? Obviously it hasn't been bringing much because I have been not on top of it. Um, and yeah, and just see where folks want to go. I'll stop talking now. Yeah, thanks for that. I mean, I'm, you know, I share a lot of your thoughts um, about this presentation from Pam. I think that um, it's given us a lot of great momentum to begin talking about distribution. And like you said, those farm to school opportunities, especially looking at these maps. Um, I would be interested in um, stepping in and helping out um, with organizing the next call. Like I said, I think that we've brought up a lot of interesting um, opportunities and questions, and I'd hate to lose that momentum. Um, so 
I can, I'll, I'll step in if anyone else is interested in maybe um, co-chairing with me, that'd be great. I might have to have a separate conversation with Aubrey. Um, I'm also chairing the Farm to ECE Coalition, so we might have to do um, some shifting around. But regardless, I'd love to have another conversation about this and um, I guess use that Farm to School um, project as a framework, at least for um, some timelines and also just thinking about uh, the research component that we have. So um, it's, you know, uh, a big question and a discussion that I don't think we have time to fit in for this meeting now. We're already at 4 p.m. Um, so I guess I'll just say I thought this was a great um, call, a great presentation, and um, let's touch base after this and um, I'll see about organizing our next meeting. Um, something else I just wanted to mention briefly, Arrow has a, um, you know, they're having their um, expo in October and uh, I've been sort of speaking from, uh, with some folks over there about a distribution focused um, uh, session or a networking session. We had originally talked about an entire track focused on distribution, but we might reduce that to um, a networking session. And I feel like that could be a great opportunity to, you know, make an open call for um, this group and to have some additional members come on board uh, to join the distribution working group. But anyways, like I said, we're um, going over time and um, be happy to touch base with you, Brianna, afterwards about, um, you know, uh, taking the reins and, and helping the momentum keep going here. Great. I'm so glad to hear that, Kay. And I'm so glad you feel like it, it fits into the work that you're doing right now. That's wonderful. Thanks. Thank you. Well, I look forward to revisiting this presentation again once it gets posted. Thanks, Aubrey.